neighborhood. 70% of the kids that have libraries in the neighborhood graduate on time. I mean, I'm sorry, if 70% of them graduate on time, there's a rate that 60% of them do not graduate on time. So it's a situation where, why don't we have a library? The school in Lexington has been closed for two and a half years. On top of that, it's the only building, surplus school building, in Baltimore City that has not been broken into. Now, I would like to take the credit for that, but I'm not going to take the credit for it because it's the community that should take the credit for it. They just had a building broken into just like Alexia of the East Baltimore will cost $1.5 million worth of damage. So we have a plan. We put the plan together. It's, 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 it's a great plan. Uh, it's going to call for a library, a business center, and a community center. So we not only can we have a safe haven for our kids, but we can train people how to get jobs. We can have a community center so people, kids can come in. And everybody's called me and said, George, I got all the books you want. That's great, but we really don't need books. Because modern day libraries are not about books. Most people use digital books, but we want our kids to read because only one in 14 kids in Park Heights can read at a fourth grade level. At, at the third or fourth grade, you're supposed to be learning to read. I mean, reading to learn, not learning to read. Yes. And if you can't read by the fourth, a fourth grade level by the time you get to fourth grade, you know where you're going to end up at? Right down that corner. Mm -hmm. And it's a doggone shame that Smite doesn't see that. The reason why those cat, cats are hanging on that corner because they can't read and they didn't finish school. And what we're trying to do is change the culture of Park Heights. That was the purpose of us starting a baseball league. You know what my kids do before they play baseball? They have to uh, read a book. They have to read a book. I don't care about your baseball. I want to care about your up here, what's going on up here. And it's going to change the culture of Park Heights. But a library is the only thing that's going to change the culture? No. There are plenty of things that are going to change the culture. Look at all this black right here. Maybe we, we stop having a library, we'll start changing somebody, start fixing up these houses. We'll fix up the homes. Folks, nobody's coming to save us. Nobody. Don't you look for anybody to come and knock on your door and say, I'm here to save you. We have to do this ourselves. I don't care who, about President Trump, and y'all heard me say it before, I don't care who the mayor is, I don't care who the governor is, until the community gets involved in doing what we have to do, nobody's going to save us. The person that's going to save us is the person that you see in the mirror every morning. And we've got to get this thing together. We've got people killing people. Just had two people killed in Park Ice here the last week. we got kids walking the street. On the way up here, I see kids riding the bike out in the middle of the street. No respect whatsoever. So I'm saying to you, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, the status of the library is this. I had a meeting with the city yesterday. And one of the things we're trying to do, we've been doing it for years, we want to put a feeding uh, program in the school. For the last six or seven years before the school closed down, we did a summer meals program there. 250 kids a day, three meals a day. You know most of these kids, this is a, Baltimore City is 100% uh, meal program in schools. 100%. Hmm. Which means that these kids don't eat until they get to school. They eat breakfast, they eat lunch, and if they're in the after school program, they eat dinner. This is not school time anymore. This is summertime. Our kids can't eat. I just met some kids just a few minutes ago. Mr. Mitchell, are we going to have a summer program? I said, I'm working on it. So we've already been approved to serve 250 meals per day. Yes. For the summer to the end of August. Can we clap for that? Yeah, you can. Thank you. <laughs> I just went to a class today because you got to take a mandatory class. I'm just in the class today for two hours saying how we do the POS and the whole night. The meals get shipped to us every single day. But you know what? I don't have a place to serve the meals. We don't have a place to serve the meals. So I went to the city. I said, look, can we open up Lake City Hughes that's to serve the meals? I, signed the, I didn't sign it, but we did the contract negotiation. They said, yes, we're going to try to do it. The last status is that we're waiting for the mayor to get back from Florida so she can look at it and she can sign the contract. Once she signs the contract, we got to go ahead and clean the building up, and hopefully, when they say it's okay, we'll be able to feed the milk, feed the kids. And that's going to last to the Friday before Labor Day, because that's when schools start now. Okay? I'm trying to negotiate with them to give us the building. I haven't asked the city for one dime. We built that playground across the street with sign now. We didn't ask for no money. This baseball team that we built, we didn't ask the city for no money. 
I just don't understand. I'm not getting on the city, but that building been closed for two and a half years. We're already showing responsibility because no one broke into our building. No one broke into our building. If, 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 it's not, if it's not worth anything else, a million dollars we say for them not breaking into the building could be given to us. We saved them five hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars. The only school building in the city that has done that, surplus school building. So I've asked them this, and I'm gonna be true with you. The planning department originally planned this meeting. Planning department, Baltimore City, planned this meeting. And I tell you, Tom Stoser, Sarah Pranella, all those folks, they didn't ask me about this meeting. They just planned it. In fact, you look at the flyer they put out. He had the wrong address on And I'll tell you how that works. Anybody been to PCDA meetings? You know how it works. They had the meetings early. They, people, it, we don't show up for the meeting. Guess what they say? Oh, nobody showed up. So the community is not involved. The community is not interested. We don't want a library for our kids. You don't want things to be better in Barbados. So when I got wind that they had planned the meeting, before I checked with me, I said, okay, fine. I'm going to have some people there. We're going to make sure some people are there. So when they found out that I was going to make sure some people there, guess what happened next? They canceled the meeting. They said, oh, well, no, we can't have those people there coming there. We're going to cancel the meeting now. So they canceled the meeting. What do we do now? We have that meeting outside. We're going to have it anyway. And I want to show the city and show these folks that sit down in their office and really no kind of park ice. So I just asked them the other day, I said, Mr. Director, when was the last time you've been to Park Heights? He said, well, I drove through there a couple weeks ago. We live here. We live here. These kids you see, come here, little man. Come here. We live here. This is my little four. Come on up here, son. This is my little four-year-old that plays baseball. Look at this guy. Look at him. That's my man. This is my man right here. This is what we're working for, people. This guy deserves Give him a nice round of applause. This little guy here deserves the same chance and opportunity as any other kid. Any other kid. I don't care about his color. I don't care about his size. But he deserves to grow up in a safe environment and be able to go. The library is about hope. No one's going to go to the library and become a, a, a Einstein overnight. But they can go to libraries and dream. And we got a company that's going to give us 75 brand new computers. That's why I don't have to ask the city for any money. We got another company, Junior Achievement, has agreed to come in and help us with programming. We got another company, Key Development, and they're concerned. And here's my man, I'm glad he showed up. This is my man, Walter. He's in charge of the real estate department. I gotta say, Walter's been working hand in hand with us. They're concerned that we won't be able to pay the bills. $68,000 a year, which is about to $5,000 a month. I think I make about $6,000 a month just for my retirement. Hell, if I got to pay it myself, I will. <laughs> it's an investment. Investment in this little guy right here. Yes, sir. But the point of the matter is, they never ask me, what are you going to do? Because every time they ask me something, I'm going to be honest, every time they ask me something and I come up with it, they move the goalposts. They say, oh, now you need this. So then I answer again, well, now you need this. So I have told them, and I made it perfectly clear to them, I'm not giving you another doggone thing until you sign an agreement to me saying that once I get this, we'll be able to take over the building. And what difference do it make? Say, there's no guarantees. Even the city itself got a hotel there and they'll be losing $50 million a year. Even the city tried to do a race track or that race they did, whatever it was, they lost $3 million. They, thank you, son. <laughs> they cut airframe back because they were losing money. So what if we went in there and lost money? So, so say the worst thing that we're going to lose money. So what? At least we tried. We try, and that's what I'm trying to get to. We got an empty building that's been closed for two and a half years, and why is it you don't want to give us this building? And folks, the only thing I can come up with is this. They don't really care about us. I'm not the right color. I ain't saying that. I don't want to embarrass somebody. I am, I'm not the right color. Our kids are not the right color. I know somebody's probably going to say, oh, George, you know, you, you, you're talking. But see, when I ask you to do something, we ask you to do something for our children, why should I have to go through this? I'm not asking you to build a rocket ship to go to Mars. I'm asking you about doing something in our community that those kids are going to have a job, 
Those kids are going to have a better education, and it's going to help improve the community. What in the hell is wrong with that? No. Nothing. Nothing. What is wrong with that? They may have, we want people to be involved. We want the community to be involved. Well, we are involved. Just give us a chance. Give us an opportunity. And if I don't say nothing else today, a couple of people are going to say something. Let me tell you something, folks. We need to stick together. I don't care if you're black, white, or indifferent. I got plenty of Jewish friends. A couple of my Jewish friends standing over here. Plenty of them. I went to Pimlico Junior High, and we were the only public school in the United States that closed down on Jewish holidays. You know why? Because they weren't coming anyway. <laughs> Our councilwoman Milton has been with us 100%. 100% she's been with us. But she can't even do it by herself. You know who can do it? We can. Y'all can. Say it again, baby. We, we can. And we must. And we must. That's exactly right. We are sick and tired, and I'm headed up the hill. I'm sick and tired of we begging people to do something for our children. My, my, I don't have to beg for my child. My, my youngest child is in the second year at University of California Berkeley Law School. Yeah, it's a blessing. But these kids here, come here, man. He won't have, they won't have an opportunity to, to, to grow. Let me tell you what this guy did the other day. Come here. Another one of my baseball players. And I always ask the kids to give him a nice round of applause. I want you to do something today. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I want you to do today what you did the other day. Every day after practice, we get these kids to say a prayer. And I asked which one of them would say a prayer today. You should have heard the prayer that this guy gave. Oh, I mean, it was so beautiful. And I was so proud of him. He's a born leader, man. Mm -hmm. He's a born leader. And this is, the, this is what we have to do. We got to give this dude the opportunity to be a leader, to be successful. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to say a prayer for us today by the library? We have to fight for them. Come here, young man. I don't do one. Come here, young man. Come here. 
I'm going to tell you this little dude here. This is my man. Thank you, sir. Just tell him what you do. Child with now, his mother, Dr. Dorsey, there she is over there. She had a triathlon. Wow. Teach kids, they make you run, you swim, and you bike. And you're good at it. Give him a nice round of applause. Right. I'm going to tell you what this little dude did to me. Just two weeks ago. I'm going to say it. I met him, I shook his hand. We teach our kids how to shake hands, too. Mm -hmm. You know, we teach our kids how to shake hands and look you in your eyes. That's right. Because they don't get taught that at home. Right. So when they come to this, they say, check my hand, look me in there. What's your name, sir? DJ. And what you supposed to say? What's my name? Uh, Mr. George. Well, you understand what I'm trying to say. He know me already. So we teach these kids how to, how to address. Yes. He, when they went down to the mayor's office, got their water, should say, I'm so proud of them. Mayor people say, how you doing? What's your name? They say, hello, what's your name? <laughs> we got to teach our kids. We got to teach our kids manners. Right. But this little dude, when I first met him, can I tell you what you told me? Yeah, he does all this stuff to fight ob obesity. Mm -hmm. I said, man, I can't swim. I don't think I can do no triathlon. He said, I don't think you can either. <laughs> <laughs> so that's telling me this is what you do. Where is her? His mother said, his mother said, please don't embarrass me. I really don't think he can do it. <laughs> and, and he was right. So, so that's all I'm saying. This, this is what this is all about. Yes. We need to get some things signed. We make sure you sign up. We need to fight for these kids. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about these kids. Yes. So we have a chance for them all. Walter, you want to say something? Come on up in. This is the real estate man for the city. who's helped us a lot. It's been a struggle. All the work in the real estate. It's been a struggle. But George has been standing tall all throughout this struggle. Uh, I believe recently we are working with him trying to get this food distribution for the summer. It is in the water park, but you're asking me the other day. It is in the water park before we view it, and hopefully we should have it in the next couple of days. So we are going to try our best to get the school occupied. Uh, as George mentioned before I came up here, we have a couple of schools uh, you know, that have been surplus that have been severely, severely damaged. Folks broke into them, took out all the metal, not just the pipes. The wires from the drop ceiling grids, all of the plumbing, and any, ele any electrical wires that they can find to strip the wires. So, uh, that's costing the city about $750,000, so, and that, that's a tremendous amount. The school is so bad off now, we are considering demolishing it, and it would be a sin to see that happen in the likes of Jews. Yes. I think we have a watchdog yes, we keeping do. an eye on the school. I understand he calls 3 o'clock in the morning when there's a problem that school with the city officials doing it. So you're not going to find another person that's going to do that on their own. My head is literally off. Uh, we got our councilwoman here, of the 6th District Councilwoman Miller. Can you come and say a few things, please? just with this one school, but with this community. And, and standing strong, and I'm, I'm never going to give up. Lang Langston Hughes was a, a problem. Um, I mean, they, they made a mistake when they closed the school. So it's just, um, you know, we're still, we're still talking. I'm still making them communicate. Um, you know, George, George is a soldier, and the community is blessed that his house is right next to that school because I'm the one that get that gets those calls. He keeps me in check. I'll get a text or a phone call two, two, three o'clock in the morning about that school. We had he had to contact me when the school we closed. There was no lighting, and I, I think that's when they did break in at one time. Try to okay, and we did. We got the lights on. We had to keep getting the grass cut just to keep to make it look like something was going on in there. It, uh, prostitution had started there. I mean, oh, wow. it, it's, it's been a long struggle, but I've been standing right with him and constantly staying with the city and trying, keeping on the city and trying to keep things going. And 
and I'm going to continue to fight. He's going to get in that building, definitely, for the yeah. summer program, yeah. and we're definitely going to keep the conversations going, because he, he does have a wonderful plan, and he is telling the truth. But it took a while for, for certain people to even sit down and read the whole proposal through. He had to actually say, have you read the program? Have you, the meetings we keep having, have you, it, it, it was embarrassing. So I think now they have read the program. So, you know, I see this as a, as a process, and it's a process that um, we as black folk have been going through for a long time. Mm -hmm. Not just the right. community, mm -hmm. but just struggles. Yes, yes. You know, George and I kind of grew up in the same area with, with Martin Luther King and so on. I remember as a child, um, having to sit in the back of a movie theater. I still remember having to sit in the back of a movie theater, you know, looking at the movie, having to wait to sit in the back of a bowling alley waiting for uh, white folk to finish bowling before me and my sister was able to bowl for the last hour. So those things will never leave me, and that's what keeps me going with you. We're going to get in that building for good. We're going to get wonderful resources. I... Um, sit in the board of directors as in the, on the National Association of Counties and, or the, and the Maryland Association of Counties. And we just had a retreat a couple days ago in Baltimore County and went to, um, I don't know if you've been to Car Carver there, their uh, Carver School, it's a um, school of the arts kind of thing. And right near it is their library that is just a state of the art. It's not, like you said, it's not just a library. Mm -hmm. It has... Uh, they have um, uh, the community college has classes in there, um, church groups. Come, I mean, it's a big community thing. So I, I don't understand why it has been taking so long for that to happen, especially since the school is closed, the building is closed. Mm -hmm. We're having problems with the right kind of curriculum to get in Pimlico. So I'm on that, and we're going to, as those meetings take place, we need more, we need the community that we have a force at these meetings so we can have what we want as they're designing Pimlico Elementary Middle. Otherwise, they're going to put in there what they want in there. So, talk, so you know, we want, here we are uh, surrounded by a number of health institutions, Sinai, Park West, um, the, the pediatric hospital in Mount, it's like five hospitals. We want a health curriculum in that school, mm -hmm. and, and uh, LifeBridge has, they, LifeBridge and Park West has stepped up to say that they'll help fund that curriculum. So again, it's a matter of just trying to get um, people that don't need, that just walk through this community, come home and ride quickly through the community to, that don't really care. So it takes it takes us to really, this is the time, this is an example of what we have to start doing at every single meeting with, with different projects that are going to be taking place around here, along with trying to get Lights and Hughes back open and active for resources that are going to help this community. And I'm there all the way with you and with the community. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to introduce our delegates here. Delegate Rosenberg and Delegate Angela Gibson will let it come, but I just want to point out some people. Folks, we got some strong people out here. Yeah. Strong people. Yeah. They're my two buddies back there, Dave I Love yeah. and Adam Jackson, raise your hand. When they tried to close down that school, they were there every week with me. They did one of the marches. We got the one, 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 one snack. We took over the school. Live Facebook. And they brought in lawyers and everything and said, we're going to take over this school, Mr. Mr. Show, we serious. We're not going to let them close the school down. I said, David, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> I said, y'all don't do that on that. I'm not going to jail. So when the police officer came in the building, they were talking to the chief of police for the schools, and uh, he said, who's George Mitchell? I looked at him and he said, yeah, George Mitchell's here. Police chief who I knew, he said, don't worry about it. He'll be out there in a minute. <laughs> so but the point of the matter is, folks, see, that's, that's where our, our, our power is right there. Adam Jackson is in charge of the committee. Dave Vaughn is CEO for uh, Elf Leaders of a Beautiful Struggle. If you don't know nothing about that, you need to check up on it. These guys are tough. They're a lot tougher than me, and they don't play. They don't play. They, I heard, I've seen them back down somebody. 
last week on Facebook. And that dude came back. I'm not going to say who it is. You can check it out for yourself. That dude came back and apologized to him. Because we're not taking this crap anymore. Don't tell me about what our kids can't do. Don't tell me that black kids don't read. Don't tell me that black kids don't deserve a chance. Don't tell me we got to live around this filth and all this black. We don't have to. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of my man right here, Patrick, uh, Patrick Henderson. He has a radio show on 1010 every Sunday and Monday. I've been on this show, what, four or five times now, Patrick? I was just about on this past Monday. Let me tell you, listen to the show. He'll tell you some things. And they're facts. We started a group here with this guy, Bill Goodman. And you know what the, the group is? No more excuses. No more. Look who's out here now. We got 80% women. Where are the black guys at? Where are the black men? We started a group, Bill, that says no more excuses. No more excuses. We black men got to step up to the plate. No more, don't make no excuse to me. I don't have a job. Don't make no excuse for you, to me about you putting your hand on a woman. Don't make no excuses to me about you being on drugs. Don't make no excuses to me about you not having a job. Because you know what? The only thing you have to do is ask. Am I right, Bill? You ask and we will help you. The worst thing you can do to me to get me on your bad side, mess with children and put your hand on a woman. And it'll be like jumping out of a plane with no parachute. Because you're going to say, I done messed up. Folks, we got to stop this mess. It's our people, it's our community, it's our kids, it's our responsibility. Yes. They haven't said that, uh, Delegate Rosenberg, Delegate, would you like to come up, please? But they're the ones who get this money for us. Come on. Yeah. You're on the spot right now. <laughs> Good evening, friends and neighbors. Good evening. I don't, can you hear me? Yes. No one does anything alone, so we are joining with the neighbors, with the city council and with the state reps to help ensure success for your plan, your ideas, and we welcome them. We hear you. We listen to you. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And yes, we will. Who are you? Who are you? Tell us who you are. Oh, I'm Delegate Angela Seacrest. All right. 41st District. All right. Thank you. Thank you, George, for all the work that you've been doing over the years and months. Thank you. We have been working. We've had meetings with Walter and with the council president and with Councilwoman Middleton. And it's inexcusable that the city would cancel the meeting mm -hmm. that was scheduled for tonight. There are such meetings because we put in a bill in Annapolis and the city responded in saying, we will have a process early on to decide what happens at every post. And it's inexcusable that they sent out an email that said the meeting is canceled, period, dead stop. Didn't even bother to say, we will reschedule the meeting as soon as possible or we will reschedule the meeting a week from today. That's what every citizen, white or black, of this city deserves. Yes. A government that responds. Yes. And we're going to write the city government tomorrow morning and say, what's the status of the library? What's the status of the yes. sanction use? Yes. Because people in apartheid deserve it and George and we will work together to make sure that we get it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I heard that, right? Did you hear that? Oh, so we mean, we're gonna, thank you, sir. Uh, I, got, I, got, I got some more people here that are very, very good friends of mine. And they're more on the state level, too. And come on up here, honey. Come on up here, Ann. Come on up, Matt. And bring your friend with you. Everybody know I got a very good friend down at Annapolis. He, I got a friend of mine by the name of Peter Franco, yes. and y'all know he collects the taxes from everybody in the state of Maryland. This is Ann. Matthew works in his office. He's right here in Park Ave. Valerie. Hey, Valerie. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. And I'm going to give you this mic. You and Matt. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Well, thank you all for coming out this evening. Uh, I think this is where the rubber meets the road. Having people engage in the community is how we get things accomplished. And definitely want to thank George Mitchell for his unyielding efforts to have a library established and built in Park Heights. Um, on behalf of the Comptroller, Peter Francho, we're here to let George know, as he already knew, but we want to share with all of you all that the Comptroller is willing and going to provide all the assets and resources 
that are available in his agency to help ensure that we get this library. Woo! Yes, yes. Now, on a personal level, I actually grew up in this community, and for me, I'd love to see my daughter and the rest of these young women, men and women be able to come and go and visit a library and take out books and use computers and use the playroom, all the things that other communities and other children in other communities are able to do at their library. So, I, again, I thank George for his efforts. Uh, I thank all of you for being here. That's where we're really going to get the movement that we needed from the community and the community participation. And I thank Anne, my colleague, I thank Valerie, my other colleague, and uh, we have a binder that uh, we're going to present to George to help him understand how to walk through the barn bill process. Uh, Delegate Rosenberg said our state representatives are willing and hopefully able to uh, submit a bond bill that will help uh, fund and establish the library that we need in this community. Yes! Thank you all for being here. Please don't give up your efforts. Please continue to show up. Continue to amplify your voices and continue to support George and his efforts to make sure that our community has what other communities need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell Mr. Franchise to thank him also. Appreciate y'all coming. Look, folks, let me tell you something. Like I said, we got some powerful people here. Come here, Mr. Shabazz. This lady here runs nine different Smart Step child care centers. She's probably one of the largest child care centers in Park Heights, if not the largest, right? What y'all don't know, this is my cousin. <laughs> so we didn't know. We were talking to each other at meetings. This is my cousin. And let me tell y'all something. She's powerful. When I was doing an after school program in Edge Cone, she came in and within five minutes, those kids are snapped to. And folks, these are the kind of people we need. These are the kind of people we have in our community. Tell me what a library would do for these kids. Hi, everybody. I wasn't expecting to come up here. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Minson. Thank you. Pass, pass the word. Um, a library would be awesome for us. We take our kids to Rosedale, to the um, to the play place in Rosedale that's inside of the library that Storyville can take a name. We take them to Woodlawn to go to Storyville as well. It makes no sense that we can't do that right here in our own community. Yeah. Have them understand that they are valuable and they are valued. If they are able to see a library in their area, it's not just about the book. It's about the information that's inside of the book. It's about them being able to transcend their own community and see where they can go. So it's important, and we love partnering with people that are actually doing the real work. You can talk all day, but he's doing more than talking. So that's why we want to be a part of it. So I think it's an awesome job that we can have at this community. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a nice round of applause. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Be careful who you talk to. You're talking about me. But you like me. Because you may be talking to my cousin. I got a lot of cousins in Baltimore. A lot. So be careful. The, uh... Pam, please, baby. I want you to go. Maybe get out of here soon. Come in here for a second. This woman here, she has a group called Share the Vision. Am I right? Pushing the Vision. Y'all heard her. Let's give her a nice round of applause. Say something to you. Because that hour was, you know, a short, you know, as well. She said, no, 
just go to the one in Pikesville because I don't think this area has one. Mm. So I thought about it and, and I had to drive all the way up Rice's Town Road to Pikesville. Mm -hmm. So my sons can do what I read and for them to get tutored in something that they need in their own community. Mm -hmm. And when, I'm, when I tell you it's important for us to be active, us to be present, us to not just depend on Mr. George, mm -hmm. not depend on the beautiful diva over there, and, and, and also our council woman, or then, or up in the community cops, back there, it's all of us. There are a lot of blocks right here. Mm -hmm. A lot of us represent over 20 to 30 blocks, and we've just taken upon ourselves to take the initiative, to actually take the initiative and be our block captain without someone assigning us and, and actually going to door to door, signing, being engaging. We need it. My, my sons, they, they should not have to go to another district or to a county for what they can have in their own community. We cannot complain. We have to stick together. And it's not, it's all we got. No, I don't like that. Because because I can get help from you. I can get help from you, Miss Sharon Middleton. Betsy, hey, Betsy. But just the fact that we need to realize that it is a lot of young boys here. It is, y'all don't understand, it's a lot of young boys here. And that I had a situation just this afternoon, and the police officers can also vouch as well, I was about to get attacked by four young black men mm. outside my house, mm. and if my sons would have looked out the window, they would have seen mm. in broad daylight around 3.45 on spring day, mm. and the something didn't step right, so, so something just said, don't show fear and play it off, mm. and these guys were between the age of 17 and 20 mm -hmm. years old. And then they verbally said that they all had guns on them, and I seen it. Getting, getting the groceries out my car to fix dinner for my son. I was poked right outside my door, y'all. And, and so instantly, thank God for the relationship that I have with the Baltimore, the Northwest Baltimore Police. And when I tell you, I called Sergeant Johnson. I called Sergeant Johnson. And and I'm and and I stayed on the phone. I was like, listen, you didn't answer because you're probably busy, but this is what's going on. This is the description of what I'm witnessing, and that a house on the corner had cameras. So if something happened, pull that tape. But why do I have to prepare myself and then others just in case something happened? And if that also comes from the resources not being in our own community. So, a long story short, um, on the way here, um, and, and, and the sergeant, um, he, he, he just so happened to call me back. And while I'm running past the BP gas station, I see the guys. So, and I, I see the guys, and I'm not going to front. And my son, so I don't even like to use this language, but if I was like, I see the mother blank blanks right there and, and at the BP gas station they have on this. Do you not know Sergeant Johnson didn't hang up on me. He stayed on the phone. And, and sit and, and say you will hear the whole thing, mm. um, you know, over the phone. So then I put the phone on speaker so that my sons can also hear too, so that they don't think that that when they call for help from the right. police department, yes, we are. when they right Thank exactly you. Xavier. Thank you. So that they know that they if they call for help, they mm -hmm. help will happen. Yes, it will. Help, help yes, will it arrive, will. and then and then instantly and. The background, they sent the police, it was less than, I guess like less than 40 seconds. Um, because what had happened between that time, I'm I'm you know, I, you know, I'm been serving the block, and it's 40 minutes after these guys were about to do something to me, they poured this man out his car, beat him, and I seen it, I had pictures. And I said, well, I said, sir, are you okay? And people is driving past. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm, and I'm the female stopping. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm sorry, you okay? And he said, yeah, just take pictures just in case. And but one of the guys dropped their phone. One of the guys dropped their phone. That's a good day off. One of the guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've <been dead. laughs>
I'm just saying, one of the guys dropped their phone in, and, and I just looked at him, and I just looked at him, I said, thank you, God, because that could have been me. They took his clothes, his shoes, beat him up. The, the pictures are horrible that I have in my phone, and that's why I was like, oh my goodness, I'm looking right at him. So, right on the phone, and then, thank God they did not pull the gun out on me, but then they did shoot at him in his car, and you can see it. So again, it's, it's for us to stand up, it's for us to be fearless. It's not them against us, it's us. Against them. It is us standing together in unity. So I thank you from my heart, because I could not be standing here to, um, today, tonight, but um, I thank God for the boldness that I personally see um, um, Councilwoman Sherry Middleton here, and that you walk in the community, and that encouraged me to see strong women as bold, like Betsy and other beautiful women out here that is taking care of our youth. So I thank you and I appreciate it. My name is Peyton Curtis Massey. Let's do a round of applause. Well, we're going to get out of here too, but I just want to say this to you. See, we got to stop having stories like this in Park Heights. You know, when I first moved to Park Heights, we thought we were like the Jeffersons. I came from Lexington Terrace, apartment 209. You know the high rise? My mother said my mother was a nurse. And she said, by the time you go to junior high school, we're going to move you. She moved to 2651 Lowell Southway, and this is no lie. Within six months of us being there, somebody broke in the house. Wow. And she said, I've been downtown in the projects all that time. No one never broke in my house. I move up here. They broke in my house. She said, that's it. We moved to Falls Park. Still trying to move up. When I came back here to Park Heights, you know, I've lived in St. Mary's County. My children went to say I lived in Wardorm. Had a restaurant in Wild. I was the first black owner to go to the Corral franchise. I was the first black manager at Martin's West. But when I came back here to Baltimore and see what's happening in this community, it's crazy. Houses are falling down. What do you need us to do? This is what I need y'all to do. I need us, we got, first of all, you need to sign everything. Make sure we got your name and address. We're going to send out some information. You heard what the delegate said. And you heard what the, um, Mr. Franco, he gave me the book here. We are going to stick together, folks. We're going to be sending you out some information. This is just a start. It's not about the library. This is a start of black people, people in Park Heights, sticking together to get things done for our community. I'm not going to have nobody beating Pam up if she came to take a dog on grocery out of her car to go in the house. I'm not going to have somebody putting their hands on you, you women. We men have got to step up and take care of our women. I'm not going to have my kids running around, they can't even play in the park. And I got to sit and beg for two years for us to have a dog on the library. There's a lot of things we need. This is a start. We need a, a better supermarket. We were the ones that, that, that lobbied to bring Sable out of here. We had no supermarket. We need a better supermarket. We need a theater. We need a sit-down restaurant. We need these streets clean. We need better housing. Now, how long, God dog, do we have to keep begging and asking for simple things? Simple things. And before I go, I just want to say, I want to thank my two secretaries, Ms. Spitz and Ms. Pearl. They do so much work. Let's give everybody know Ms. Pearl this week. And we got another board member here. She counts all our money for us, Ms. Davis. She only got a count, but up to a dollar, so. <laughs> and uh, so Dahlia, come up here for a minute, please. Dahlia is an uh, employee of the uh, state prosecutor's office, and she is a good friend of mine. And I just want you to say a few things. Thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you so much for all that you do. It's an honor to be here and with the community to see everyone who truly cares about their community and what everyone is doing. And we need to continue to work together. I've lived in this district my entire life. And the past two years as a prosecutor, what I've seen, it's just broken my heart. And it's time for us all to get together and work together and work hard to help make these streets safer. I shouldn't have to be scared when I'm trying to come and park in here. Right. Miss Pam shouldn't have to worry about being scared to take her groceries into her house. It's not fair. It's not fair to anyone. There's children here, beautiful children, smart children. We just saw the children coming up, giving blessings, mm. talking about what they do. They deserve a future just like anyone else, regardless of what color they are, regardless of where they grew up. And thank you, Mr. Mitchell, for all that you do. Uh, we had our senator just come in, and also our other delegate senator, 
Oh, would you like to say something? Your, your counterpart said some, some things already. Well, when you, see, when you see one or two, well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Uh, good evening. I was at a meeting last night, and uh, Mr. Mitchell told me that he's having this meeting. I had something else on, our, on my calendar. I went there and I rushed up here. Uh, my colleague spoke, so uh, we we operate as a unit, as a team. I'm sure Brother Ali is going to say something, but I'm here to support the cause. We want to do the right thing. The library is an issue. Lights and Hughes is an issue, how we utilize that. Uh, we don't need white elephants, dark elephants. We don't need elephants in the community. We do need to make sure these things work, and I'm here to support the efforts of the community and I follow the lead of I'll get you here. Can I bring my colleagues up to say a word to you, please? First of all, good evening to everybody. Thank everybody for coming out, because this is an important issue. And I feel like it's bigger than the library. It's about too many chicken joys. And we need more George Mitchells than Chicken George. And we, and I, I'm, I'm just being 100 with you. We have had uh, not the type of outcomes that we're looking for in this community. That's why we gathered here today to say, hey, enough is enough, but it's nonsense. And George had asked me, he said, uh, well, Bilal, we're trying to get some things together to try to get this library together. Would you be willing to submit a bond bill? And I, I graciously said yes, because my heart is with the community. I work for the people. I ain't in no cliques. I ain't none of, part of none of that. I'm working for the people. And the people should feel empowered enough that if people are not working for your interest, then let them go. Call an Uber for them and let them go. Because that's the bottom line. When, you know, we got uh, the tales of two cities, we got the tales of two communities, and I'm quite sure you understand that uh, we've been getting the, the brunt of the nonsense down here in Park Heights for too long. So now we're coming together and saying, look, if you're gonna advocate for the people, then that's what you have to be about, the people. It can't be no more special interest, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. It's about the outcomes and doing something substantial for this community. It makes no sense for us to keep calling ourselves uh, the majority numerical and we look and we compare and contrast and see how our communities look as compared to other people's communities. You know, George shouldn't be out here like a lone wolf, continues to say, hey, man, we need a library, we need a library. And our no uh, neighbors to the east have come together with resources, you understand, and got the things that we, uh, that we need. And I mentioned that when we was at the Department of Planning, we can build all the 21st century schools in the world. They're nothing but buildings. It's the same way we're building all these mega churches, and that's not to say that some of these churches are not doing good, but it's just a structure. We need people that's going to work and do the work and get in the community, you understand, and advocate for the people. And it's enough of that nonsense. I'm tired of these chicken Georgia. I want more George Mitchell. That's it. Uh, look, it's not about me. I'm going to do one more person. And the reason why I'm going to do this one more person, y'all need to know about this guy. And thank you for all the delegates, Sharon Green, Middleton, and Councilman, for coming today. Is it okay, son? Come on up here, buddy. Let's get ready for okay, son. Right? If y'all don't know, y'all don't know the park right, right there, the, the, the uh, park lane, we just named that Is okay, son, Boulevard. Wait. 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 Is it wait? Is it okay, son? Wait. Same thing. This is my man here. Let me tell you something. This guy does one hell of a job helping us in this community. And for you don't know, I'm going to say this to you real quick so we know. Next Monday, the 10th, you know, we got a food pantry. Over there, we give away 6,000 pounds of food every two weeks. 6,000 pounds. 
So now, if you need some food, I don't care if you're rich. Come and get some free food. I'm talking about chicken, beef, lamb chops, turkey. Oh, she been there. All that good stuff. But folks, there's some people there that really need it. They really need it. Sharon has been, I call her Sharon, but our councilwoman has been there to help us distribute the food several times. Bilal came down, helped us out. These are the kind of things we have to do for our community, people. You know, you can be on your backside tomorrow. You can be on your backside tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you a little short story before I go. A year ago, I got two 12 inch rods and eight screws in my back right now. The doctor told me, Mr. Mitchell, you will probably never walk again. I said, you need to go tell that guy next door the next room what you just told me because that ain't happening. Folks, you can be on your backside tomorrow. And it wasn't for that man upstairs. Believe me, we will be nothing. So we got to stick together. Israel, come on, buddy. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank God for allowing us all to be here. And this is a very special occasion, as any occasion just concerning our children. They are our most important resource. I'm in the business of repairing adults. And, it, and there's no way that you can keep repairing adults. You can't police your way out. You can't medicate your way out. You can't legislate your way out. And we sure can't incarcerate our way out. Only way we can deal with this is change the lifestyle. And that starts with the children. If we take it away the demand by raising our children, we will never have to be paying another adult. That's the key. And children are our most important resource. It's a shame that we got yachts down in the inner harbor that cost more than a library. That's it. That's right. We can't even get a library up here. But we need to stop waiting on people to do for us that way we can do for ourselves. We have been known to do amazing things on a short-term basis. We got to buckle down and go for the long haul. It's going to be difficult. But after difficulty comes ease. And we will have our children changing the lifestyle. They can have all the dope and coke they want, but if there's no demand for it, it's just rot. Right. Children are our most important resource. They depend on us. One day we're going to depend on them and put on our dependence. Mm -hmm. So if we don't invest, we will find ourselves in a mess. Thank you. Oh, okay. Give a round of uh, There's a few more little announcements. Stephon, Stephon Walker, see that guy back in? He's the best Community layers on Baltimore City has ever seen. You call Stephon Walker, you call him on the phone, he gets it done. If he can't get it done, he'll call you back. So this is when I'm going to get it done. Okay? So y'all make sure you get two community officers. Where the police officers at? They, they left? Officer Hammond and Officer Pettiford. So you got probably neighbor. See all these raggedy houses across the street? See all them raggedy houses? See that grass that's six feet tall over there at the house? See my house loaded behind the playground? We're we, we going to do something with them houses. Kaysan has a deconstruction company. I'm sick of this crap, people. Okay. They want us to live like rats. We accept it. That's why we accept it. We accept it. That's right. That's why we don't get no And we're not, we not doing this no more. Right. I'm sorry. I got a friend told me, he said, you come here and live with me in Chesapeake, Virginia. The same